last time on the Skip and Josh podcast. All right, Josh, next time we're going to have the much ballyhooed all expos team. I'm ready. I've done all my research and I'm ready to go. Because you mentioned that we might have a DH on the last episode, I already got some feedback from uh, some listeners saying, no way, no DH. So we will not have a DH. No DH. You have no idea how many hours of research I did on this, by the way. I've never prepared for an episode more than this one. I can't wait. So this is going to be great. <laughs> You're listening to the Skip and Josh podcast with Skip Sherman and Josh Obadia. I'm Josh in Toronto. And I'm Skip in Montreal. In today's episode, our all time Expos team. Okay, Skip, I'm in a really good mood today. I'm having a good day. There's actually nothing bugging me, and that means that today's episode is going to suck. But actually, the good news for the listeners is today is our long awaited reveal of our all time Expos team. Correct. I'm excited. I'm I'm actually, the mo- thing I'm most excited is about is that you told me that you've been doing research, <laughs> like a lot of research. And then before we got on the phone here and pushed record, you were doing something with a spreadsheet. I got, I got <laughs> all kinds you of got Excel formulas. spreadsheets going on. I got mathematical formulas. You have no idea what's going on here right now. I'm very scared to see what kind of Josh analytics are going to come out of this all exposed team. Maybe you're going to redefine how baseball is is uh, thought of. Sal Butera is my all time exposed catcher. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but let's <laughs> but let's um, let's actually go over some ground rules before we get into names and numbers. Good. I hope we have the same ground rules. I hope so too. So so what I did was like mm-hmm. I took. All the Expos players, not all the Expos players, like a guy who played seven games, I didn't count him. Mm-hmm. But I took a lot of Expos players. I accumulated their stats only when they played on the Expos. Of course. And I basically got an average of what an average year for this player was as an Expo. So mm-hmm. that way I could compare someone who only played two seasons to someone who played 10 seasons. Because if you're just well, looking at totals, obviously the guy with 10 seasons is going to have way more numbers. I think based on this conversation, just your your lead up, I think we're going to have different stuff because I, I counted longevity as an asset and not like not a, a, as something to be rewarded if someone played 10 seasons as an Expo. Yeah, but I didn't want to penalize somebody who only played two or three seasons and had two or three really good seasons. I didn't want to penalize them. Al Oliver is your first baseman. No, no, we're going to get to that. I'm not telling you now. No, but I'm I'm, I'm saying that's what you're going to come up with. Well, and it might it might be it might be, but I also who, used I also used some just basic opinion too. Right. Okay. Because the guy that I didn't really, I don't, there's no one on my team here that played only two seasons. I don't even think there's anybody here that played. Well, maybe in the backups, there's someone that played three seasons, but um, no, no, my 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 starting my starting lineup. Everyone in my starting lineup played at least five seasons on the Expos. Okay. So, so, so what, actually, what, actually, what, actually, I have to need, uh, we, there's something else we have to back up a little bit. So basically what mm-hmm. we're doing is this is not just a starting lineup. It's a 25 man roster. So that includes Correct. five starting pitchers, five relief pitchers, two catchers, first base, second base, third base, shortstop. And I have left field, center field, right field. Me too. Yeah. And then three backup outfielders of any outfield position and three backup infielders of any infield position. Mm-hmm. I kind of cheated with the backup infielders, but we'll get to that. Now, obviously, there are some positions where the decision is pretty easy. And obviously, yeah. there are some positions where the decision is not as easy. I found for the most part, the starting lineup sort of picks itself. There's a couple of little bit difficult decisions. The, the the starting pitching is tricky because the, the depth in the four and five and then also the fourth and fifth relievers is very tricky. So I think we'll we'll see. I think we're going to agree on a lot of stuff, but let, let's, you want to just jump right in and where do you want to start? No, I don't like want to actually, I don't want to start yet. I don't want to start yet. I got to tell you one more thing <laughs> Okay. because there are some positions like, let's say you didn't have the internet. Let's say it didn't exist. 
Mm-hmm. And let's say you were just born, I don't know, 10 years ago and you never saw an Expos game. Yeah. Right? And you wanted to determine, you know, who some of the best all-time Expos are or were. The easiest thing for you to do is get into your car, drive to a little town called Cooperstown, New York, go to the room where they have all the plaques, and mm-hmm. that will help you make your decision. In fact, it will make your decision for you in some cases. In some cases, I mean, yeah, I mean, there are some players in this list that we're about to reveal, your list and my list, who are in the Hall of Fame. You Correct. Know? But I mean, those those are the obvious picks, right, you know? Right. That, that's like when you talk to Joe, you know, Joe Nobody in your office, for example, who, who doesn't know anything about the Expos, all they know about is Reigns, Dawson, Guerrero, right? Like, that's what they know. Right. So yeah. I think I'm now ready to start, and um, I think we should start at catcher. Oh, okay, because that's a tough one. Yes. Yeah. So, so I, I guess you have Gary Carter. <laughs> I have Gary Carter as my as my catcher. He played, um, let's see. 1974 to 1984. Right, and then also 1982. Sorry, 1992, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Which yeah. we don't have so, to count that if you don't want to, but... Well, I mean, look, we don't have to go over the credentials. I mean, he had 220 home runs as an expo. He's in the Hall of Fame. He was a seven-time All-Star. Um, he actually finished second in the National League MVP voting one year, 1980. Was he not the MVP um, in the All-Star game? I think he might have been the MVP in the All-Star game twice. At least once. At least once. Yes. At least once. I, I'm thinking twice, actually. Uh, Expos have a good history in the All-Star games, actually. Yes, they do. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so that's that Gary Carter. I mean, he's the best catcher of his generation. You know, before him, there was Johnny Bench. And then Gary Carter took over that mantle as the best catcher in the National League, or probably in all of baseball, and held that for pretty much all of the 80s. Even after we traded him, he was still one of the best catchers in the league, at least for a couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, do do you remember that? Like, he had two years where he had more than 100 ribbies. Oh no, he was. I mean, when you look at his stats now, they're they're not as impressive as you remember because the batting averages are a bit low, the home runs aren't out of the. I mean, this is the seventies and the early eighties. There weren't many big home run seasons right, back right. then, right? So when you hit thirty or twenty eight or twenty nine, it was a big deal. For sure, especially back then, the catchers were. I mean, the catchers were Bob Boone, who hit two ten with five home runs, right? Right, right. Like, like that was that was uh, considered. Um, okay to have just a guy who was a catcher that could just field. So getting a guy that could hit and field was a big deal. Anyways, we're not going to, I don't want to go into such detail on all the picks because we're going to make it very long. So I actually, I'd like to do the outfield next if you're okay with that. Sure, because I know why. Because you want to reveal the more contentious stuff like a little bit later. Right, right, right. Okay, so I think we have the same outfield. So let's start in left field. I have have Tim Tim Raines. Okay, very good. Um, in center field, I have Andre Dawson. Correct. I have do that too. And in right field, I have Vladimir Guerrero Sr. Yes, correct. Me too. Okay. So, I mean, if you want to go over some of the numbers, I can do it super quick. Or if you want to do it super quick. but I mean. Well, I just want to tell you one thing. That Vlad Guerrero, in his Expos career, an mm-hmm. average season for him, because I told you yeah. I averaged it out. He averaged 100 RBIs a year. He averaged 100 mm-hmm. RBIs a year. Yeah, that's phenomenal. Uh, absolutely, and I think his average, it's the his batting average in those seasons and expos is well over three hundred. I think it's actually over three twenty. I think you're right. I didn't do that, but yes, I think you're right. Yeah, so he's the career leader in home runs, at the expos lead, career leader in home runs, which is pretty astounding. Yeah, um, considering there wasn't like the longest tenure. I mean, it was fairly long, ninety six to two thousand three. It's actually not bad. And um, if you go to Reigns and left, I mean, seven. he had seven straight All-Star games at one point, Tim Reigns, and obviously all those stolen bases, right? And just considered sort of the Ricky Henderson of the National League for most of his career. Mm-hmm. And then you have Dawson in center, who, like, he averaged. You're, you have the stats, too, but I, have, I, I didn't bother calculating them. I just looked up an article. You know, he averaged 24 home runs and 30 stolen bases from 1977 to 83. So, Right. I mean, all you have to do about Reigns and Dawson is to know that, like, back then when the All-Star game sort of meant a little more, these guys were there all the time. 
<laughs> yes, <laughs> you know? yes, absolutely. It wasn't just the Expo fans that knew, wow, we had some great players. Everybody in baseball knew this guy's the best left fielder in the National League. This guy's the best center fielder in the National League. And then when Vlad was in his Expo years, he was the best right fielder in the National League. Agreed. So, okay. so let's go to the infield. Now, the infield wasn't as easy as you might think. No, because when you look through the history of the Expos, the outfield is loaded. Yeah. <laughs> Many eras of the Expos had loaded outfields. And the infields kind of sucked. Like, the Expos basically never had a good shortstop or second baseman for most of our lives. You that, know? That's true. However, that is true. However, that's yeah. what made... I think second base and shortstop easier to pick because there's really only one good second baseman and really only one good shortstop. So it made it easier to pick. I thought first base and third base were harder to pick because third base, I think I know who you picked and we'll get to that in a second, but third base, the the Expos only had three different starting third basemen for a span of like 23 years. That's correct. And and all all three of them are legitimate. Like, if you picked any one of these three guys, I couldn't argue with you. All right, so let's start with first base. Okay. Who do you have? I I reluctantly picked Andres Galarraga. I have the same pick. Now, it's interesting that when you say reluctantly, because it's like, actually, my memories of Andres Galarraga are kind of bad. Because I it's when exactly, you his... That's exactly what I was thinking. He played, like, seven seasons, six full-time as an expo. And the last two were horrible, especially the last one. I uh, my, my lasting memory of Andres Galarraga is just a million strikeouts and a guy who couldn't make contact and a guy who really sucked. But that was like his last season of the Expos. He was horrible, and then they got rid of him. And then obviously we all know what happened when he went to Colorado. He had like tremendous seasons. But you forget that he actually had a bunch of good years. Um, you know, he had two gold gloves. He was in the All-Star game once. And he had four seasons in a row with... 90, 92, 85, and 87 RBIs, which is nothing to sneeze at, honestly. But he only so, had he only had two seasons where he hit over 300, only twice. Oh, I know, I know, I know. So, but then when you look at when you look at like who who were your other choices? Who was your second and third choices? Well, we'll get we'll get to that when we do the bench players. Or do you, or do you want to reveal that now? No, we can reveal it now because the guys you talk about now are not necessarily on the bench. They didn't necessarily make your team. This is true. Well. Okay, so before before I did this exercise of going through all the numbers, yeah, in my head, I had my idea of who I wanted the first baseman to be. I had the idea of every position who I wanted it to uh-huh. be. So who did you think it was? And I honestly thought you're going to laugh at me. I thought that I was going to come up with Cliff Floyd. No, because he wasn't good on the Expos. He was really good in 1994. Well, really good? What's your definition of really good? He hit 280 with like 10 home runs. What's wrong with 280? Back then, 280 well, was fine, a fine, but enough. I mean, he, he wasn't like a tremendous player in 1994. He was okay, you know? Well, I thought it was going to be him, but then I saw all his stats, and I'm like, well, I can't pick him because he's not no, good. No, not good at all. No. Um, so that's who I thought it was going to end up being, which is why I was yeah. reluctantly... I was reluctant to pick Galarraga, but based on numbers, I had no choice. Yeah. Well, there's, well, when you go back in the archives, there's Ron Fairley who played in like the early, early days. Right. Who has a lot of good, consistent seasons. Like I, I, Ron Fairley's before my time, never saw him play. All he is, is a guy in a, like, it's just a bunch of numbers to me. I really don't know anything about the guy. Right, right. But he had like a lot of like 270, 15 home run, like some good years, you know? And then, and then, of course, I mentioned Al Oliver, who unfortunately only had two seasons, but they were two really good seasons. Exactly. Well, that that was the next thing I was going to say. I mean, Al Oliver was an all-star. And, yeah. and okay, so his first year with the Expos was much better than his second year, but he hit over 300 both years. He, well, his first year with the Expos is actually maybe one of the greatest Expos seasons ever. Yeah, he hit 331, when you, when you 109 RBIs, years. 22 yeah. homers. And and you know what? He wasn't He wasn't no slouch defensively. Well, he wasn't great. They nicknamed him Scoop, but he really kind of <laughs> sucked. I never understood that nickname because he was terrible, and they they gave him like a nickname, like as if he was some defensive wizard. You know, I think it was more or less like when he did scoop it, it was a miracle. You know, right? Um, he was a professional hitter. You know, when you talk about professional hitters, yes. that's Al Oliver. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, but uh, but I think you're right. I think it's Andres Galarraga is the pick, and we we agree. So I yeah. think that we agree. So, second base. No, no, no. We have to go to third. <laughs> okay. 
Because I think second base and shortstop is where we might not agree. Okay. I don't know. Maybe not. So th- third base. Third base. As I as I mentioned, I think there were only three different third basemen for a span of 23 years. Yeah. Well, from the time the Expo started in, 19, in 1969, Correct. you had Bob Bailey, and then you had Larry Parrish, and then you had Tim Wallace. Right. And any one and of that, those three guys. And that took you all the way from 69 to 92, basically. Right. And you, and, and you could make a case for any one of those three guys being the best all-time third baseman on the team, if you look at their average numbers. Yeah. Now, so my third baseman I ended up picking was Tim Wallach. Me too. I think I think just because he played for so many more seasons, and like you said, he had a lot of lousy seasons in there mixed in with a lot of good seasons. So the average season for him maybe is not as great. Although when you look at Larry Parrish's numbers, he really only had one great year. But the thing with Tim Wallach is this. I actually yeah. saw him play. And so what you don't see when you look at the numbers is – I remember how many times Tim Wallach came up to bat in key situations and did nothing. And other times when the Expos were ahead 10 nothing, he did a home run that didn't matter. So so actually my brother nicknamed him yeah. the insurance man because he got a lot of RBIs for you when you didn't need them, but didn't get so many key hits in clutch situations. Now this is all anecdotal, but... But he anyhow, did have I, a couple of... Yeah, he did have a couple of big years with where with like huge RBI numbers. Oh, for sure he did. Like he had 123 yeah. RBIs in 1987. Yeah. You know, so look, I'm glad we agree that Tim Wallach is the all-time third baseman. Look, he's the all-time leader in the franchise in games played. He's the all-time leader in hits, which says something. <laughs> and um five All-Star games, three gold gloves. That alone is enough of a resume to pick him. I love Larry Parrish. Larry Parrish is the most underrated player when you talk about Expos history. And I was trying to figure out a way to pick him, but you just can't, you know? So just one thing about Tim Wallach. Um, he only had two seasons where he hit over 290. Right. He didn't have a great batting average. No, he was not a great player. He was a good player, you know? But yes, he is he is the best third baseman. But as I said, you could make a case for Larry Parrish and you could make a case for I forget his name now, the guy who was the first third baseman in the history Bob of the Bailey. Team. Yes, Bob Bailey. Bob Bailey. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Second base. Okay, so second base, again, I had in my head an idea mm-hmm. of who I wanted to pick going in. And this is where I was telling you that some of my colleagues were talking about their all time expos yeah yeah and so it was second base and shortstop where the players they picked for second base and shortstop i'm saying to myself no 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 those not that's not who was on the all-time expos team at second base and shortstop Mm -hmm. so anyway my second baseman is jose vidro okay so we agree that's mine too okay i thought you might have a different guy who did you think I would have? I thought maybe you would pick Delino de Shields because I know how much you loved him. I do love him. And that was the guy who my colleague said was the all-time second baseman. The thing with Delino is, look, well, Delino only played four years. Right. And three of those four were really good years. Right? right. He had three out of his four seasons. He had like over 380 or even maybe over 390 on base percentage with a lot of stolen bases. Um. But he had one year in there that was kind of sucky where I think he only hit like 230. I don't know what happened to him that year. He just kind of... And funny enough, it's, that it's, year where he only hit 238, he actually hit 10 homers. So, yeah. you know, obviously yeah. he was doing something different or trying to do something different. But when you look at Jose Vidro's numbers, they very are they actually are very impressive. He has a 300, 304 lifetime average as an expo. Yeah, he's, his numbers are great. And you know, a lot of those years runs, were, you know, at the end know. where no one was paying attention to the expos anymore. Well, that's part of his problem because a lot of those years, exactly, he had some really good years and he was pretty much the only good player on some really lousy teams. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So like I was saying, like, Jose Vidro actually was in the All-Star game three times and Delino only played four years. So it's hard to pick Delino over Vidro. Right. You know? Yeah. Although, like I said, like, I love Delino De Shields. Like, that guy was... I feel bad. I felt bad for him when he got traded because he was part of that core group that all came up together in, you know, around 1990. You, you, you feel bad for him. I feel bad for me when he was traded. You remember how angry I was when he got traded? 
I was so mad. First of all, you mentioned the core. I still I still remember the headline in the in the sports section in the Gazette the day after Delino was traded. The headline was yeah. "Deal Rotten to the Core," and then you might recall right. it is. You might recall a few months later, the Expos had their winter caravan at Olympic Stadium, and I approached. Was it Dan Duquette? It was Dan Duquette, and yes. I, I approached him and. And you and and whoever else was with us, we cornered him. We cornered him. We did, and I and I think you guys thought I was going to punch him. Well, you were getting a little heated, considering like the guy could have just had us thrown out of there. You know. Well, whatever. I was livid at that trade. Livid. Me too. But in the end, like, look how great it was. In the end, yes. I still, I still don't agree with trading an everyday player for a pitcher. I still don't agree. I with know, that. but in the end, the actual the person who actually knew about baseball and how to evaluate talent basically made the right decision because we got Pedro, and he went on to have some amazing years. He and did. obviously, even actually, we'll get to Pedro in a sec. But you know, um, and Delino really didn't do that much on the Dodgers after the, his best years were those three years he had on the Expos. The thing with Delino is, so obviously he doesn't have the the power numbers of any other player, but he had a lot of no. steals, so you can't discount his steals. Yeah, and I, like I said, his on base percentage was tremendous. The guy would take pitches like crazy. Yeah. All right, shortstop. Well, l- let me just say something about the Expo second base situation. Oh, brutal. <laughs> For most of our lives, second base was a black hole, and shortstop too. I mean, <laughs> we had Rodney Scott, and everyone thought he was great because he could steal bases. The guy used to hit two ten, <laughs> and you know Doug Flynn. there was like Brian Little, Doug Flynn. Brian Little, I remember think, led when the we league traded in, in bunt singles one year. Yeah, when we traded for Manny Trio, everyone thought, "Oh my God, we finally got a second baseman." We had him for basically a cup of coffee, and then he was gone. But he made the All Star team that year, I think. Maybe, and then your favorite Tom Foley. Tom Foley was decent. He was decent. And then actually Mike Lansing at the end of the Expos franchise was okay too. Right. Yeah, but for a long time. And then shortstop was also Spike really Owen. We, I mean, look, we the, we started with, like like I said, sort of said about the catchers at the time, in most of the 70s and the 80s, it was normal to have a, just an all-defensive shortstop. Like, a, you know, a guy who was just, like, look, I mean, Bill Russell and... Um, Bucky Dent. Oh, like, these geez. guys like played for a million years for really good teams just because they were good defensively, you know? And then Don't forget about you know, Ozzie Smith. Yeah, well, Ozzie Smith at least could hit a little bit, right. you know? But I mean, at the beginning of his career, he he couldn't hit at all, you know? So he was just a defensive player. There was only at that in that era there was only one shortstop who could hit two actually, Dave Concepcion and Gary Templeton. Yeah, but even then all those those guys only hit for singles. There was no there was no like power hitters. Like Cal Ripken was the first guy that came that could right, hit for power, right. and then it spawned a whole bunch of off. Now, now your best players are shortstop. You know? Right, right. Yeah. So, who do you have as your all-time Expos shortstop? QB Brooks. We, we, oh, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Why? How many seasons did he actually play at shortstop? I think he played four out of five seasons at shortstop for the I Expos. I think I don't think so. Okay, I'm gonna look him up right now, and we'll confirm it. Can we can we see that? Yeah, if you go to I'm on his page right now on baseball reference. Hold on. Yeah. So he played for Montreal one, two, three, four, five seasons. Correct. That I know, but to me he was an outfielder. And, and he played shortstop for one year. I know he had hundred RBIs, but uh, So he played shortstop three seasons and right field two seasons. So he played shortstop more than any other position. Right. Okay. And, and, and hold on, let me, let me, let me add to that. The three years that he played shortstop, apparently he he was like 14th in MVP voting one year and he made the all-star team his second and third year. So no, no, I hear you. QB Brooks was a very, um, like he was a good player. You know, and it, and it, it, he, we got him in the Gary Carter trade, which was all, everyone hated the trade. Mm-hmm. And what we got back was a lot of dreck. But Hubie Brooks was a professional hitter. Yes, you he know was. the guy. The guy could hit. the The problem is, like I know you're saying he's your all time shortstop, mm-hmm. but like that guy could barely field. <laughs> well, <laughs> before before the Expos, he still played infield. He played third base. Yeah, for I the know. Mets. Yeah, this is true. Um, and second base and some shortstop. So, like, he yeah. was an infielder. It was the Expos yeah, that know, converted but, you know, him to in an those outfielder. Three seasons that he say, you know, those three seasons that he played shortstop, you know, 
28 errors, 15 errors, 20 errors. It's not the... Yeah, whatever. I'm Anyways, just looking okay, at offensive look, numbers. I'm happy, I'm happy you picked him. Uh, you're entitled to your pick. It's not completely out to left field. Like, it's it's fine. You know, I just didn't feel like he he didn't play that long and he was terrible defensively. So I didn't really even think of him much of as an infielder. Although you'll see my picks later for the bench. Okay, so um, who's so, your shortstop? Uh, Orlando Cabrera. Okay. He played from 97 to 2004. So I guess I guess what we're looking at here is more of the longevity of it, you know, compared to compared to like Hubie Brooks basically like his three seasons, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, he was a, definitely a far superior defensive shortstop than Hubie Brooks or many Expos shortstops to be honest. No question. Right? No question. Yeah. And he and while you say like, you know, Hubie Brooks had like a couple of big offensive years with 100 RBIs, you know, Orlando Cabrera had a 96 RBI season and also an 80 RBI season. Yeah, listen. I I actually thought going in before I looked at the numbers, I thought I was going to pick Cabrera. Yeah. But if you compare their average numbers, Cabrera yeah. averaged whatever, uh, how many, nine homers a year, 54 ribbies a year, 58 yeah. runs a year as an expo. Yeah. Whereas, yeah. whereas Hubie Brooks, 15 homers a year, 78 ribbies. Oh, and, and, there's no one. And, there's no one going to tell you that Hubie Brooks wasn't a better hitter than Orlando Cabrera. But the difference is, Hubie Brooks could barely play shortstop, where Orlando Cabrera excelled at that position, which is half the time. You know, like that's half of his job. Sometimes he's fielding, and sometimes he's hitting. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I, I guess I took into account the defense a little bit more. So, and I didn't. Where did Chris Spire come into your list? Not anywhere on my list. What about Wilfredo Cordero? Um, actually he was under consideration. I looked him up and, um, I was like, actually his numbers were a lot worse than I remembered. <laughs> well, I, I thought he played more I thought than they four were years. Be he better. only played four years on the Expos. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're going to go to the starting pitchers before we do that. So actually I'd like to do the backups. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. Let's do that. That makes sense. So my backup outfielders. Yeah, I think we're gonna this have is, the same three. I don't know about that. Mm. My backup outfielders. Okay, I'll just tell you them. Yeah, I, I'm sure we don't have the same three. Okay, Larry Walker, mm-hmm. Marquise Grissom, mm-hmm. and you're gonna laugh because if you laughed at Hubie Brooks, you're gonna laugh at this too. Rusty Staub. That makes sense. Uh, well, there's well, look, Rusty Staub only played three years, but there were three fantastic years. Yes, they were. <laughs> right? Yeah. And actually he played four years because he came back 10 years. So later. I'm going to tell you how I cheated because I have Grissom Walker and Moises Alou mm-hmm. and I have Rusty Staub as my backup first baseman. <laughs> okay. That's fine. I totally cheated because you forget that Rusty Staub came back in 1979 and he actually was the backup first baseman. No, I, I didn't forget that. that. So he totally, yeah. that's totally legit. Yeah. So my feeling is between Larry Walker and Rusty Staub, I got the backup first base spot covered. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Now, yeah. now some outfielders that I wanted to be on my team, but just couldn't put them on. Well, because the outfield's loaded. Look who we just said. Reigns, Dawson, Vlad, Grissom, Alou, Walker, Staub. Okay. So you have to be <laughs> like, you have to be really good to get into that list of seven. Do you know who, who is not on the team? Who is really good? Well, like off the top of my head? I, well, I'll tell you, I have it in front of my screen. Well, Rondell White. Rondell White had phenomenal numbers. Yeah. And then there's also a lot of fan favorites like over the years, like Otis Nixon, you know. Oh, but or, never mind. Uh, like let's let's focus on just actual numbers. Sure. Ellis Valentine had good numbers. He did, yeah. Um, Ken Singleton Absolutely. had and what good about, numbers. Ken Sing, yeah. What about Warren Cromartie? I also well, I a have him as an hitter. infielder, but yes, and and well, that that's that's good, yeah. And Henry Rodriguez only three seasons, but they were three good seasons. So now the backup infielders. So I already told you that like. Rusty, I like my backup first base is sort of covered with the outfielders, so I only have two. Okay, who are they? I'll go first because it's two guys that we've already mentioned. Mm-hmm. So, like my two backup infielders are Hubie Brooks, okay, <laughs> and Delino. Right. So mine are uh, Delino, Al mm-hmm. Oliver. I couldn't leave Al Oliver off the team. And, That's a good one. And the third infielder is Larry Parrish. That's great. I mean, there's all guys that we sort of talked about. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
So, and like I said, you know, like the first when the Exos first became relevant was in like 1979, um, and it, it was the culmination of all these players from their farm system coming up at once, mm-hmm. you know, and coming together was like when we say the core, you know, like, but the 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 original core was you know Larry Parrish, Carter. Ellis Valentine, Andre Dawson, Warren Cromarty. Though that was the guys that all came together. And then you can throw in pitchers. We'll talk about it in a second. But um, when they traded Larry Parrish, it was a big deal. <laughs> yes, it was. You know, it, they softened the organization softened the blow by saying that they had this kid Tim Wallach who was going to be the the third baseman of the future, and he they weren't wrong because he played for the next ten plus years mm-hmm. at third base. Yeah, but but. Um, I know from reading, when you read the Jonah Carey's book, Up, Up, and Away, Larry Parrish was a very, very well-liked player. He was very popular, and he was considered, like, the leader, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, other guys. So, the two players that my colleague thought should be on the team that annoyed me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is his sec- I can't wait to hear this, because this, this was the impetus for making this whole list. Right. Was that? <laughs> yeah. So, his, his second baseman is Delino. Okay. Which whatever I, he made my team, but not as a starter. That's fine. It's fine. I mean, he was he was really good. And, and, and this long. annoyed me too because his shortstop, yeah, was Mike Lansing. Now I like Mike Lansing, but he wasn't a shortstop. Mike Lansing never even played shortstop. He, as far he as might have played a few innings at shortstop, but that, a few innings. But still, he's not a shortstop. So that's what annoyed me. Like of all well, the shortstops, well, that that should annoy you because that's. That's people like not even knowing what they're talking about. Well, that's what I'm saying. Mike Lansing, let me tell you this right now. He played um, 1,110 games in his career. Uh huh. And only um, 143 of those were at shortstop. <laughs> so, yeah, no, basically, I know. his first year when he came up, they tried him out at shortstop for 50 games. His last year on the Red Sox, he played 76 games at shortstop, and that's pretty much none in between other than in emergencies, you know? So, so I just whoever that name guy you... is at your work has no clue what he's talking right. about. Right. I want to name you some some players that we didn't talk about at all, who I considered but didn't make my team. Tony mm-hmm. Perez, three good seasons on the Expos. I didn't see any yeah. of them, but they were good. Dorian Suits. Oh, did he do Remember the commercials, commercials for that? Yeah, I go to Dorian Suits. Um, Vance Law only three seasons as an expo, but he was yeah. he was decent. Oh yeah, we didn't name our backup catcher. Oh, we're gonna get to that. Mm-hmm. Mark Rudzelanik. Yeah, a couple of really good considering years. Considering yeah. how how many bad shortstops were on the expos, he was decent. Yeah. In fact, there was one season where he had over two hundred hits, which was a big deal. Yeah, at the he was time. tremendous. There was one year where he took the league by storm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So my backup catcher, my backup catcher, I'll just tell you, I've never saw the guy play. But according to the numbers, it's very obvious. It's John Bateman. I looked at the numbers. He was the catcher before Gary Carter, right? right? He was the catcher from the beginning of the Expos franchise up until Carter basically took his job away. Mm-hmm. And actually in Jonah Carey's book, they go into a little bit, great, quite a great detail about that. <laughs> How there's a lot of people that didn't want Carter catching and they tried him in the outfield because they thought Bateman was too good, mm-hmm. you know, I guess. But okay, I put I picked a player that I did see that I actually really didn't like mm-hmm. when when he was on our team. But then when you look back, you realize he was actually pretty consistent for six seasons. He was a reliable hitter and it's basically average defensive catcher. Was Darren Fletcher? I, I I had a feeling that's who you'd pick. Yeah, I mean it's fine as long as you don't pick Nelson Santavania or 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 Gil Reyes. <laughs> um, well, Gil Reyes, I mean, he barely played. People don't even know who this guy is right. who are listening now. As long as you didn't Nelson pick Santavania's most famous, most famous uh, story as an expo, let's just say, is when a friend of ours um, threw his glasses at the TV because of Nelson Santavania. Oh, I thought I thought was... he threw his glasses at him at the stadium. No, I think it was at the TV. No, no I think it was at him at the stadium. Oh, actually, at the stadium. Yes, that's what I thought. That's very possible. <laughs> <laughs> we shall protect the innocent by not naming names. Right, right. Or the not so innocent. All right, so let's go with the starting pitchers. Okay. Um, now, can I just start because yeah. we're going to get into we're going to name 10 pitchers right now, right? Well, let's just do starting pitchers first. I don't know, but we're going to we're going to name 10 five starters and five relievers. Yes. And what's clear about the history of the Expos is there weren't too many lefties. <laughs> 
This is true. Lefties are hard to come by. I think our first three, like, are you going in order or like, how do you, or just doesn't Um, matter the order? Yeah, let's go in order. Okay. So my first guy is Steve Rogers. Okay. He's on my list. I, I, you know, I don't know if he's first or second, but he's definitely on my list. Yeah. I'll I'll do my, I'll do my rotation and then I'll do yours. Okay. So uh, Steve Rogers, I'll just give you a little bit of his credentials. So, I mean, he's the winningest pitcher in Expo history. Um, he was a five-time All-Star. He finished in the Cy Young, uh, the top three for the Cy Young voting three times, which is actually quite impressive. He averaged 239 innings pitched per year between 73 and 83, which is, think about that, right? And, I mean, obviously he's most remembered for giving up the home run to Rick Monday in the National League Championship Series. But, I mean, people do know, anyone who followed the team know, that the Expos are not even in that championship series if it's not for Steve Rogers. Because he beat Steve Carlton twice in the previous playoff round Mm -hmm. (laughs) to get them there. Including actually getting the game-winning hit in one of the games himself. By the way, you bring (laughs) up a a good point. There is a pitcher that that didn't make my team. Because mm-hmm. he only played three seasons on the Expos. I'll, I'll yeah. tell you who it is later. But, see, I didn't count any postseason stats. No, 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 I didn't count postseason stats either because there's hardly any anyways. Right. But just, just to put on Roger's resume as the best pitcher in Expos history, you know. Had I counted postseason stats, this guy that I'm referring to would have made the team. But anyway, we'll get mm-hmm. to that later. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> um, now, and then my second guy is Pedro. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't play a lot of seasons, to be honest. Four. You know, 90, 94 to 97 basically is, is the list, right? Or 93 to 97. No, 94 to 97. Yeah. And actually the first couple of years were kind of average. I mean, he was this out of control, lanky, like skinny little pitcher who threw a million miles an hour, who hit a lot of batters and walked a lot of guys and struck out a lot of guys, but he was still good. <laughs> You know, he was still good. He was effective. And then in 1997, he put it all together with, like, the best pitching season in Expos history um, with 305 strikeouts and a 1.90 ERA. And then, of course, everybody knows he went on to the Red Sox where he had four or five ridiculous seasons in a row and was basically um, probably the most – I mean, I don't want to get into the history of baseball, but Pedro's, like, five-year stretch – like his last season on the Expos and his next four on the Red Sox is probably the most dominant five years as a starter in history of baseball, other than maybe like Sandy Koufax. That that's like it. It's just his numbers are are so ridiculous. It's hard to even fathom how good they are. You know. So, well, he's the only Expo to ever win the Cy Young. He only gave up the whole season fifty one earned runs the entire season. And he and it's not like he just threw like not that many innings. He threw 241 innings. He also had this is unheard of today. 13 complete games. That's not normal. Yeah, and when you think about how little he is, right? Then the knock on Pedro is like he wasn't going to be durable because his arm and he's like he's too small and skinny. 13 complete games. No pitcher these days is going to have 13 complete games in his career. And this guy had it in one. Even season. then, it was unheard of for a season, even. You know, um, so I think we're in agreement there. We'll, we'll get to your list in a second. Um, my third pitcher was Dennis Martinez. Um, he had a hundred wins as an Expo. He threw that perfect game that we all remember. Um, he was a workhorse. You know, he came to the Expos as this guy that had some good years on Baltimore. Everyone knew he had a bit of an alcohol problem that kind of derailed him on Baltimore. I think the Orioles always thought he was going to be better than he was, even though he had a lot of decent seasons on Baltimore. But he really came into his own as uh, on the Expos and really became the ace, right? And he was, you know, my my thing is with the pitchers is like, what did other teams think of our players? And when Dennis Martinez pitched against you, you knew you were in trouble. <laughs> you know, you knew he was gonna. You knew that like that guy could go out and really just shut you down. You know, so I think where we're gonna disagree is on the fourth and fifth starters. I really had no idea who to pick. I honestly, I I went through like seven, eight guys t- till I came up with the fourth and fifth starters. I did the same. Yeah. And I don't even like the fourth and fifth starters. The 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 six, seven, eight, nine, ten actually could be all interchangeable. Yes. Um. So I actually just looked at the stats, and and I was surprised that Bryn Smith 
has surprisingly really good stats for a pitcher that I remember as being good, but not great, you know, and kind of like just an anchor of the pitching staff and would go out there every five days, you know? So he had between 81 and 89, he had 81 wins and his career ERA on the Expos is 3.28, which is incredible. That is pretty good. You know? And then the fifth starter, again, even more of a flip of a coin. I went with Bill Gullickson, who had 72 wins as an Expo and a ERA on the Expos of 3.44. And there's honorable mentions, which I... I'll just name them quick because they might be on your team. So some pitchers that I didn't that I considered here was Jeff Vicero, Scott Sanderson, Charlie Lee, David Palmer, and Bill Stoneman. Your honorable your honorable mentions are so funny, and you'll understand why in a minute. Okay, so go through your rotation now. Okay, so I have Steve Rogers, I have Pedro Martinez, and I have Dennis Martinez. Yeah. So we're not even going to talk about that. Like I said, so, like we said before during the week, like the top three is there's no question. Yeah. So, so I had a tough time with numbers four and five. For sure. Going in, before I looked at the numbers, again, I had this thing in my head. Yeah. I really wanted to pick Bill Gullickson. I really did. Yeah. And, but I just couldn't do it in the end. And then when I looked at the numbers, I thought I was actually going to pick Bill Stoneman, but I didn't. He had some really good seasons, Bill Stoneman, for some really lousy teams. Like those yes. early Expo teams sucked, right? And he won 15 games, 17 games, and he also lost a million games, you know? So it's hard to say. I, I mean, Stoneman, for me and you, kind of, we never saw I know, because you know? I didn't see him play, but in 1971, he threw 19 complete games. Yeah, but back then, so, they threw a lot of pitchers through 300. Of course, games. of course. Yeah. So so those are guys I didn't pick. Mm-hmm. Um and and I, at one point, I think I had David Palmer in my top five. I took him out. Too injured. I think Charlie Lee was in my top five. I took him out. He was solid, but never great. You know, well, I mean, I should say he was great on the day because he did throw no hitter. But I, mean, I even wanted to put Mark Langston in my top five. I mean, <laughs> only one season, but it was a great season. Yeah, you had a good year, that Mark Langston, for sure. So, and, and I, I mentioned earlier, had I considered playoffs, Ray Burris would have been in my top five for sure. The problem with Ray Burris is he actually didn't even have really ever a good year. Like even no, his, I know. his stats, even in that 81 season, weren't even that good. But he had a great playoff. You know? it did, exactly. So yeah. so the, the last two that I did pick that are in my top mm-hmm. five. Yeah. Jeff Facero is in mm-hmm. there. Um, yeah. The only left-handed pitcher in, yeah. my, in my, of my, of my 10 pitchers. Um, yeah. Like he was, he was a very good, like, listen, he had what, five years in a row, four years in a row with an ERA under three. Yeah. But he um, only was a starter for two of those seasons out of his five. I think the other he was in the bullpen. That could be, but I don't discount yeah. like he no, still no. gets credit I'm, for his I'm numbers as a reliever. I'm fine with it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, he averaged 125 strikeouts a year in his last season with the Expos. He struck out 222 guys. Very underrated um, pitcher for the Expos. So I have I have him. And then my fifth one, you may laugh at this because you didn't even mention him, is Javier Vasquez. Look, I was going to pick Javier Vasquez. <laughs> you, you, and you're right. I forgot to mention him in my, my list of like honorable mentions. He was con- definitely considered. I just felt like he was so freaking up and down. Well, his first three seasons with the Expos were not good, but his last three seasons with the Expos were. Like it was almost like two different guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was almost like different guys because he started to figure stuff out, and maybe the problem is that they they brought him up too quick. But right? you, the difference between a guy like Brent Smith, who was consistent every year, is like he was like a professional pitcher from the day they started him till the day he left. Whereas Javier Vasquez, they sort of said, "Hey, you have talent. Here you go." Because we were all, we were just basically a young. But team when you when but when Vasquez you mentioned Tim Wallach, how he's the all time Expos leader, I think. And so what you probably don't know about Javier Vasquez in his six seasons with the Expos. He had over a thousand strikeouts. That's nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, no, for sure. No, you're right. It's nothing to sneeze so, at. So that's my uh, that's my starting pitchers. Sounds good. I think the relievers were actually easier to pick. Uh, they weren't that hard. So I'll go first. Uh, Jeff Reardon, mm-hmm. 152 career saves. He's the Expos save leaders, and he had some tremendous seasons <laughs> as an Expo reliever for some teams that were. Not even that good because the Reardon's best years were in that little window after 82 to like 
86, mm-hmm. right? Like, and those teams weren't that good, <laughs> you know? Um, Mel Rojas, I have as on the staff for sure. Mm-hmm. I actually have him ahead of John Wetland in my order. Um, although John Wetland is there. Because M- Mel Rojas was so good because... He was the 94 Expos, right? Everyone talks about the 94 Expos, how good they mm-hmm. were and everything, right? Mel Rojas was unbelievable. <laughs> when he came in the game, the game was over. Yeah. <laughs> right? They brought him in for the seventh inning and the eighth inning, and you couldn't get a hit. You couldn't touch him, and then they brought in Wetland for the mm-hmm. save in the ninth. That was the formula. And then what makes Mel Rojas so great in my eyes is that after Wetland left, Rojas became the closer and he was still had some great yes, years, yes. right? Yeah. So that's it. Reardon, Rojas, Wetland. Um, my fourth guy who had 101 saves and who's actually the Expos all-time leader in mm-hmm. ERA is Tim Burke. Okay. And then I put Jeff Vicero in my bullpen, right? So that that's where that lands. All right. So I have I have four of the same. Obviously, I don't have Facero because I have him as a starter. So I have Reardon, I have Wetland, I have Rojas, and I have Burke. And before I tell you the fifth guy, I'm going to tell you the sixth guy. The sixth guy who okay. was on my top five and then I took him out was actually Mike Marshall, who I never saw play at all. Yeah, that's right. He gets penalized in our list because we didn't see him play, but he was a very good reliever on the very early Yeah, he was. He averaged 19 saves a year. I think he had 75 career saves with the Expos. Yeah, and and 19 saves is when 20 saves was a big deal, not 40, because they didn't pitch, they didn't arrange their bullpen to get saves. Right, and his last year with the Expos, 73, 1973, he had 31 saves. So he doesn't make the list because, and and you, you might laugh at me for this one, the, my fifth reliever mm. is Ugeth Urbina. Well, I was going to put him. I mean, he he certainly has the save numbers. He had 41 saves in 1999. Yeah, he certainly had a lot of, like, he racked up a lot of saves on some kind of forgotten teams, mm-hmm. I should say. You know, but the thing with Ugeth Urbina is that he really didn't pitch for very long. And I, I guess he could be there. I mean, there's nothing wrong with picking him. No no issues there. So that's that's our teams. We're done. That's our teams. We're done. You know, but just back to the starting pitchers. The, the, there's a couple of pitchers that, like, we forgot to mention that, like, um, did Ken Hill ever figure into your well, list? He is, he is on my document, and he had three good seasons, actually. Um, you know, his ERA was always under 330 as an expo. You know, he averaged 14 wins a year. I don't really care so much about wins, uh, to be he, honest. He had, a, he had a lot of good news. And there was a guys, you know, there's Pascual Perez. There's, uh, there, there's always, there's, there's tons of pitchers Of course, there's the Oil years, Can Boyd. Know? Oh, my God. And there's sure. um, yeah. Zane Smith. And the, remember Zane Smith? And, the last, oh and, and, and you know who I actually, I, I really liked? I only pitched two seasons on the Expos. Butch Henry. Oh, my God. Uh, I just mentioned, I just mentioned Mel Rojas as like the unsung hero of the 94 mm-hmm. team. Butch Henry in 1994 was yes, unbelievable. He was <laughs> right. He was actually probably our best. I mean, pitcher. he was our fifth starter. But if that's your fifth starter, that's yeah. why the team had 94 wins. Yeah, he was so good. And he and of so course yeah. Bartolo. Well, Bartolo came at the end, and I, it's crazy that he pitched all the way till last year, which is nuts. But whatever. So we only had one difference for our starting lineup, and mm-hmm. I think we only had one. Or two differences for our backups. Yeah, the pitchers. I didn't have more. But like I said, when you wanted to do this list, the li- it kind of picks for sure, itself. For sure. No. Yeah. So I didn't have Moises on my team. But you did. A lot of good memories. Uh, the one thing I wanted to tell you about Facero, you know that story that I always tell you about Which Jeff Facero. One? So I'm like driving home from a game. I don't know what year it is. And like um, we're listening to the call in show, and the Expos just lost the game because Facero gave up a home run in the, one of the late innings. And this caller calls up, and he's like, "I only got to tell you one thing." It was Milch Melnick hosting the show back then, and Terry Hay. I remember? do remember them, but I don't remember this story. He's like, "Mitch, I just got to tell you one thing. Jeff Facero is a big fat zero." <laughs> do you know who the caller was? No, but I could hear it in my head even now. 
as soon as you mention Jeff Vicero, that's the number one thing that pops into my head. All right, that's it. I mean, we can have a whole other episode of uh, Expo's uh, Memories, but that's a for a story podcast for another day. Before we sign off, remember, you can listen and subscribe to new and archived episodes of the Skip and Josh podcast wherever you listen to podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and of course, Spotify. If you listen to the show through Apple Podcasts, please leave us a review. We would love to hear from you via email, skipandjoshshow at gmail.com, via Twitter at Skip and Josh, or by liking and following our Facebook page. As always, you can get all the links to everything I just talked about on our website, skipandjosh.com. To Rusty and Beachy, and Singy and Georgie, Stoney and Frenchy, Bach and Cy and LP, Hawk, Crow and Rock, Woody, Ross the Boss and the Kid, Eli, Gully, Scotty, Charlie and Scoop, the Cat and Marquise, Walk and Moe, El Presidente and Pedro, Cliffy and Rondell, and Orlando and Michael and Brian and Jose and Vladdy. You got the picture. A wealth of wonderful memories. And I, I know that as Expos fans, you won't let go of that.